we continue using too many antibiotics on animals and the resistant strains keep developing, we will lose the ability to use antibiotics effectively on humans. If you have bacterial resistance that's developing and you have no new classes of antibiotics that are dealing with these increased resistances, and I think everybody agrees that that's happening. Those two things coming together are just a car crash. When you get crowding, accelerated growth rates, and cheaper feed, you are creating an environment where antibiotics become necessary. There is perpetual illness and sickness that's in the system all the time, which is why they just start giving the antibiotics from the minute that they're born until the minute that they're processed. Can you imagine um, going down to your breakfast table in the morning and putting a bowl of cereal in front of your kids, uh, pouring the milk on, and then spooning on antibiotics every single day in anticipation that they might be sick or in fact uh, knowing that what you were doing was accelerating the growth rate, it's insanity. There's a lot of good that has come from, from factory farms, but I think the core practices have gone too far. We've tried to get it too cheap and we're producing too much. When you've got the vast majority of, of the American population either overweight or obese, we've got a problem. We have a big problem that needs to be fixed. And a lot of it centers around how meat is produced. If we address that now, we can ensure that in 2050, when there's 9 billion or 3 billion more people on the planet, that we can feed those people in a real way. But if we don't deal with it now, the wheels are going to come off on this thing and we're going to have no solution uh, at, that, at the time we need it. We're not scientists, and, and I don't want to pretend uh, to be a scientist. We feel Applegate is a model uh, and a potential solution, and, and we don't think it's a potential, we think it is the solution to farming going forward. We haven't been using antibiotics. We haven't been using growth promotants. We work with 300 farms who less than 1% of these animals ever get sick uh, over, over the course of their lifetime, and we think that there is an alternative that is scalable and can be large enough, it, 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 you know, with lots of family farms contributing to this thing, to give us an alternative model to the large factory farm systems that we have in the country today. I can't stand it when people preach to me and tell me what I need to do and what I should do and what I've been doing wrong. And that sometimes is how I think some of this comes across because we're very passionate about what we believe in and we care a lot. That's not the intention. The intention is to raise the issues, to open up the dialogue, and to give people more information so they can make an informed choice. Every year, Applegate raises thousands of animals. Less than 1% get sick and have to be treated. If those animals become sick, we will remove them from the flock or from the herd and isolate them, treat them because they're sick and they deserve to be treated, and they are then sold off conventionally under normal um, labeling practices. 100% of the animals that you buy under the Applegate Farms label have never been treated at any point in their life with antibiotics. Removing the antibiotics is the key to fundamentally changing how we produce meat in America. When you withdraw antibiotics, you have to feed the animals better, you have to give them the room that they deserve, you give them the humane practices that they are entitled to, and you don't manipulate their growth rate to have them do anything other than what Mother Nature intended them to do. We believe that consumers have the right to see where their meat comes from. To me, the word natural, uh, which is what people think of as being healthier in the meat industry, it's not so natural. You can have conventional farming practices and call something natural. So as a result, what we do is we label all of our products no antibiotics used. So when you make the claim no antibiotics used or no antibiotics ever, the government is basically verifying that from birth until it, the animal gets processed, there are no antibiotics anywhere uh, in the system. So the key is to look for no antibiotics used. We've got to tell the truth. We've got to tell people what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we're doing it, and we need to let them see what those steps are.
We need to make sure that the labeling laws and the practices that are being endorsed maximize the opportunity of each American to make the decision on their own about what's right and healthy for their family. Preservation of the Antibiotics for Medical Treatment Act is an important bill that's working its way through Congress that we would ask um, people to inquire about, ask your representative and support. We're not telling anybody that they have to do this or have to do that. We just want to give them the choice. So why not change these practices, which we can change easily and should change, and there's legislation in Washington promoting that, and preserve the right for humans to use antibiotics the way they need to, when they need to. What's wrong with admitting that we made some mistakes? If you put too much on your credit card, okay, that's fine. The problem is if you don't admit it and you keep doing it over and over again. If you realize you made a mistake and let's be honest and deal with it and then adapt the behaviors, we're gonna be fine and that's what we need to do to ensure that the system we have for feeding America and feeding the world is the correct system when we really need it.